In this video, I want to take a look at creating a background in Adobe Photoshop for your website. So here goes. Now, what we want to think about too when we're putting in a background on our website, and this video is being made in 2013, because this info is something that's going to change. What I want to do actually for my background, I am going to make it bigger. I'm going to actually plan for the lar for a larger resolution of a screen. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to come on in, I'm going to say file new and I'm going to have my resolution set to 72. I want the color mode to be in RGB and I am going to set my width. I'm going to go for pixels and I'm going to put my width um, down to 1920 and I'm going to put my height at 1080 so we can figure out the math of how, of how big this screen would be I'm going to give it the name background and really depending upon what you would like to do you can either set it to be transparent uh, or white um, either, whatever it is that you want to do. I'm just going to keep it at white. I'm going to come on in and say OK. So now this is the area that is going to be in my background. Now we look at that number of 1920 uh, by 1080. What's significant about that number, we can figure out the inches by just dividing 72. And let me give you a number. I'm going to hit pause and figure out the math. Hold on for a minute. Okay, so with those numbers, we're designing for a monitor that's about 26 inches by 15 inches. Now again, we want it to be a little bit bigger because what will happen is as we place it into, um, we're going to actually place it into Dreamweaver eventually in a couple videos from now, uh, but it will adjust depending upon the person's monitor who's viewing it. Now, the tools that I'm going to work with in order to create this background are the paint brushes. So I come on in and I'm going to begin by grabbing my brush. Here is my brush tool. Now, actually maybe what I want to do to begin is maybe I want to add a colored background. So I can come on in, edit, I'm going to do a fill and I am going to just come on in here and choose the colors and maybe I'm going to do something. I want to actually make this background very much in the green families. So I'm going to say, now I definitely want to choose only web colors also. I'm going to say, okay, okay. And here I have my fill. Now I'm going to come on into my paintbrushes here. I'm going to grab my brush tool and I'm going to pull my brushes out. And I'm going to take a look at some of these brushes that I have. Now, I have a lot of different brushes in here. Some of them are more like splatters. I can come on in here and make this a little bit bigger. Let me go even a little bit bigger. I want to go bigger without letting it, without um, it becoming pixelated. What I want to do is come on into my colors. Again, I'm going to come into this green area. And I'll choose something that's a similar kind of green and start coming in and creating this background. Come on in, choose another brush, make my brush a little bit higher. Double click for my color. And I'm going to stay in this value family, but come on up my spectrum a little bit. Hit OK. Make my brush a little bit bigger in here. and come on in. All right. All right, I'm gonna hit pause and work on this a little bit. I can see that I can even come in and make these different shapes too. Now, you can make your own paint brushes too. You can make all kinds of different things with your paintbrushes. And I have a video on that on my YouTube channel on creating paintbrushes. Now let's say too I wanted to work with how this was spaced out and the orientation of it. What I have opened right here is my brush window. So if you don't have it open, you just go to window brush and there it is. And what I can do here is I can work with how this is oriented right in here. Okay. And I can even come in right in here and I can up the size. So I'm going to up the size a little bit more. Let's go up 
quite a bit here. All right, and I can see, you know, as I come, I could click and start creating some interesting textures for a background that will be used in Photoshop. Okay. All right, so I'm going to keep playing around with this. Now, I can play around a little bit more. I could come on in Color Dynamics. Um, and when you double click any of these, you can see that you'll get, um, you know, some different things. I could say I want the saturation to change as it moves across. Sometimes it, you can see a difference. Sometimes you can. Oh, and there we can see that I had the brightness jitter, and that definitely changed things up. So play around with these and see what you come up with. I'm going to hit pause. I'll be back in a minute with a finished background. Okay, so what I have just done is I worked in Photoshop with the brushes and you can see as you come on over to my brushes here, I have a lot of brushes. And again, if you want to learn how to get more brushes and create your own brushes, go and watch the um, creating brushes in Photoshop on my YouTube channel and there's a lot of other people who have videos on how to do that. Now what I want to show you what I'm going to do last to kind of dull it down a little bit and make it more like a background is I'm going to grab the gradient tool in Photoshop. I'm going to actually choose uh, this, I'm going to go for this gradient right in here. Actually, I'll go for that one. Let's try that one first. If I want to, I can uh, go backwards. Try this one. All right, so what I can see is I look at this gradient that it has, it's a value scale and it has a low opacity to it. So once I grab my gradient, I can click and pull and I can see I've put a shadow on this, but I'm going to open up my history because I'm thinking that I don't really like that so much. I'm going to come back. I'm going to choose one of the different greens. I'm actually going to go and put a little bit of this green color in and then um, some of the opacity. So I click, I pull. That's what it looks like. So see what I'm doing is I'm taking some of the green. I'm going to run it on through. So there we go. I'm going to start from this side. So it's feeling a little bit more like a background. Voila, voila, actually, and I'm going to change this around quite a bit here. I'm going to come on in and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to try to do that on the above layer. Click pull in. So I'm just fading out the sides. Now, one of the reasons why I want the sides to have similar feels is because they'll eventually, if the monitor is bigger, they will um, join up and it will repeat itself. So there we go. I'm gonna add a little bit more, a little bit more, and I'm gonna come in and put some in the center too, just for the heck of it. Because what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to actually fade the opacity of my top layer a little bit so I can see it through and there we have it. So this is gonna be my background for my site. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come File, Save for Web, and I am going to see, I'm going to save it as a JPEG. That's fine. There's no transparency that I need to keep in here. And JPEGs are nice and clear. So I'm going to hit save. And then I am actually going to put it into uh, my sites folder. So I come on here, sites, and I am going to put it into my PC seedlings folder. And I am going to name it background and hit save. And there we have it. That would be how you would go about creating a background in Adobe Photoshop CS6. Again, the options are limitless with what you decide to be the contents of your background. What this video gave you more was a working side, a working size. And also a main point is to think about having the edges have a similar feel because it has to be connected. Um, we want it to be able to work when it's connected. All right, thanks so much.